Hey folks, welcome to The Ramble. So, I was at the grocery store today. My lovely wife and I were doing our regular grocery shopping and I had a minor experience that led to me having a minor realization, but it was a realization about something that I believed that I never really realized that I did believe. And again, it's not that important. It's not a worldview changing thing, but it's something that I just, I had never thought about before and I never realized about myself and my opinions before. And it's, it's always kind of exciting when you discover that about yourself, when you realize, oh, that's what I think about that. And I never realized that that's what I thought about that. So let me tell you what it was. We were standing in line to check out and there was a lady ahead of us in the checkout line. And as we were standing there uh, waiting for our turn, I saw another lady walk by behind us still doing her shopping and she had a dog with her and the dog had a little uh like a, a sash on you know like a little saddle sign over over the dog's back and i didn't see what it said but i assumed that it was a service animal and i said to my wife as the dog walked by i said you know i love that and i hate that because it's a service animal and i know because it's a service animal that i can't talk to it and i can't interact with it. I can't bother it because it's, it's at work, you know, and I hate that. Like, I love to see the dog, but I hate the fact that I selfishly, like, I just want to go up and say, oh, the dog and pet the dog and talk to the dog. And I can't do that. The woman in line in front of us at uh, the checkout said, well, it's probably not a real service dog. And here's the epiphany that I, that I had that I want to share with you. And you can judge me for this. You can, you can agree with me. You can disagree with me. You can, think that this uh, reflects poorly on me or reflects well on me. I'm, I'm curious actually is to hear what some of you will think about this. I don't know. But I realized in that moment this, this truth about myself and that is that I didn't care whether the dog was really a service dog or not. Because the dog was well behaved. You know, it seemed like a well-trained dog. It, it, it seemed like it was focused on, on its business. And it was, you know, looking around, but it, it, it wasn't at all ill-mannered. It seemed very well socialized. It seemed good around people. And uh, I realized that as long as a person has a dog that is properly socialized and that isn't mean or scary and can be around people and, and isn't going to bite people or bark at people when it shouldn't or attack people or make people in the in whatever space it's in feel uncomfortable. Um, and it's not, you know, it's, it's house trained. It's not going to piss and shit everywhere. As long as the dog is trained and suited to be around people or around other animals, I don't give a shit. Here's how I feel about people who have well-trained dogs who are okay around people, who will do what they're told, who will obey commands, who are well socialized and are good around people, and they're brought into public spaces where dogs ordinarily wouldn't be allowed, and they're presented as service animals, but they're not actually registered, trained service animals. Here's what I think about people who do that. Good for them. I'm happy for them that they have found a scam that works well enough that they have figured out a way to have their dog with them everywhere they go. And that there's really nothing that anybody can do about it. Good for them. I was thinking about it as after I had this, this epiphany and I, I thought, you know, with the exception of maybe one or two people, there hasn't been any human being I've ever known in my life that had a dog that I didn't like the dog better than I liked them. Even if it's a person I really liked, even if it's if it's like a, a really a close friend or someone I enjoyed spending time with, a good friend, you know, or someone that I really liked or really respected or really admired, with a, a handful of exceptions, if they had a dog, I liked their dog better than I liked them. And at any given moment, no matter what each of them was doing, I was more interested in whatever the dog was doing than whatever the person was doing. If the person was talking to me about something and the dog was just over in the corner sleeping, I had to fight to keep my attention on the person. I would, mu I would much rather watch a dog do nothing than watch a person do almost anything. The President of the United States should be required to have a dog and to treat that dog right. 
That should be the 28th Amendment of the Constitution. We should pass an amendment of the Constitution that says if you are the President of the United States, by the time you assume the office, by the time you take the oath on Inauguration Day, you should have a dog ready to move into the White House with you, and that dog, you, oh boy, you better take care of that dog, because not taking care, not having a dog means you can't assume the office. It's automatic removal. And not taking care of that dog, if we find out you're not training it properly, or you're yelling at it too much, or you're getting physical with the dog, you're spanking it or kicking it or doing any kind of fucking abusive shit to the dog, oh, you're out of there, buddy. Automatic. It should be the only automatic removal from office. If anybody finds evidence that the president has a dog and they're mistreating the dog, you're out of there. That's something else. Dude. That, that's, that's actually an opinion I've had for many years. I have no compassion or pity in my heart at all for people who mistreat animals. Like that's just, that's been a part of me for as long as I can remember. If you mistreat an animal, you're as good as dead to me. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're in my family. I don't care if we've been friends for a long time. I don't care if I admire every other fucking thing about you. If I find out that you are cruel to an animal, you can go fuck yourself. Not just dogs, any animal. A cat, a pet rabbit, anything. If you're cruel to an animal, you are absolutely worth nothing to me. Because there is nothing more unforgivable than being cruel and vicious and mean and abusive to a being that has done you no wrong, and that in most cases, if you're talking about a pet, depends on you for its life. To mistreat uh, an animal like that is unforgivable to me and inexcusable. And if pe anyone who does something like that is, not, is shit on my shoes, They're, whatever happens to them happens to them. Whatever, whatever misfortune befalls them, I figure they deserve. You have it coming for being a fucking asshole toward animals. You shouldn't have kicked your fucking dog. When they opened the first dog park in Hagerstown, which was just a few years ago. Hagerstown never had dog parks until about three or four years ago. And there was enthusiastic, energetic debate in the city as to whether or not this dog park should even exist. People in Hagerstown who were against the dog park, people who wanted the dog park were like, what's the big deal? It's a park. You set it aside for people who have dogs. They take their dogs there. The dogs get exercise. They get to meet the other dogs. What, what, is the, what is the problem here? Other cities have them. It's nothing remotely new. People who were against the dog park, you would have thought that Hagerstown was the first place on the planet to propose such a radical concept. A dog park. A park where people can bring their dogs and the dogs can walk around off the leash. They can just run around in the park. <gasps> And I remember thinking, when I was seeing how much resistance there was to it, and it got done eventually, there is a dog park in Hagerstown now, so it got done eventually. Reason prevailed, but there was some dug-in resistance to this dog park. And I, I remember thinking during that debate, when that was still up in the air, like, what, what is wrong with these people? How joyless and just miserable does your life have to be? to begrudge people who have dogs in your town, in your community, having a dog park, having a place to take the dogs. I mean, not everybody can afford to have a house with a great big yard. So maybe people have dogs and they live in an apartment and they take their dogs for walks, but they would like to take their dogs someplace with some grass and some open spaces to just run around and play and be a dog. How wrong has your life had to go for you to begrudge people a dog park? For you to begrudge dogs a dog park. Trump doesn't like dogs. And it's very tempting to me to view that, that one isolated preference of Donald Trump, as the thing that explains the whole. You know? Of course Donald Trump doesn't like dogs because he's a, he's a vicious, narcissistic, self-obsessed person who can't possibly love anything else, especially something that he would have to take care of, that can only give love back to him. Can't make him any money, you know, can't make any deals for him, can't give him any uh, political alliances, is just an animal that wants to be loved and to give love back and to give joy back to its people. You know, Donald Trump has no use for anything like that in his life because all of his relationships are transactional 
and based on what he can do for them and what they can do in return for him. It's all just transactional bullshit with Donald Trump. He's just a joyless, narcissistic pile of shit. And the fact that he doesn't like dogs should have been the red flag that everybody saw and was like, oh shit, he doesn't like dogs? Oh, fuck him. Because we know about that, the rest of the shit shouldn't be a surprise. Oh, he's super racist? Oh, he hates immigrants? Oh, he hates women? Oh, he's, he's probably a rapist? And he's just a huge, obnoxious, outspoken, ignorant as shit bigot? Reckless and completely without expertise and just a huge danger to everyone around him? Shouldn't really surprise us that he's the biggest asshole in the universe? Why does that surprise us? He doesn't like dogs. You can probably tell that um, I still have my backdrop up behind me. I, I'm, I'm shooting this right after I shot, uh, right, right after I did my most recent live stream, my Ask Away live stream. And one of the questions I was asked during that show was if I have any beliefs that were, what's, what's my most offensive belief that I am aware of, but I don't think it's important enough to change. And I said my prejudice against people who drive loud cars or loud motorcycles. Um, and I still think that's probably a pretty good answer. But maybe my prejudice toward non-dog lovers could be on that list. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying it definitely belongs there, or it even if it's there, that it needs to be that high. But maybe it, maybe, maybe it belongs there. Maybe I should, I should think about it. But I don't feel super motivated to think about it. You know? Like, I would much rather look out the window because it's, it's nice weather and people have their dogs out now. And I just want to look at the dogs. Because I love dogs. And I love cats. And I love bunnies. I love animals. Animals are just the best. And how could you not love animals? I just don't get it. And if you actively dislike an animal, like what? Like what am I supposed to even talk to you about? <laughs> Why should I even sit at a table with you? If you don't like, because I, we're not going to get along. If you're an active disliker of animals, we're probably not going to get along. It's, it has, it doesn't even have to do with my private prejudice against you. <laughs> it's just a practical concern. We're probably not going to get along. Like, why are we even talking? If you're an active disliker of animals, I mean, why are we, well, this is a waste of time. You know, you leave or I'll leave, but one of us has to go. Because this, whatever this is. This isn't gonna work. I'm sure there's a dog within walking distance of wherever we are. And I would much rather just stand a respectful distance away and just look at the dog, go over in a shady corner and circle around and lay down and then just do nothing for 15 minutes. I'd rather just have that interaction with a dog <laughs> than spend like 10 seconds hearing the most interesting thing that a non-dog lover has to tell me. And that's what I learned about myself at the grocery store today.